Hello students, my name is Alok Semwal and in today's lecture I am going to discuss about structure activity relationship of antihypertensive agents. So first of all we will discuss structure activity relationship of symptholytic drugs. Symptholytic drugs are agents that decrease the activity of sympathetic nervous system. They are further subdivided in several subcategories such as centrally acting drugs, ganglionic blocking drugs, adrenergic neuron blocking drugs, beta adrenergic blocking drugs, alpha adrenergic blocking drugs and mixed alpha beta adrenergic blocking drugs. So here I am going to discuss about the structure activity relationship of beta blockers. Most of beta blockers are in the chemical class of propanolamines. Lead compound for the generation of beta blockers was isoprenaline. Isoprenaline is a beta agonist rather than the antagonist. So here a question arises that why this compound is used as a lead compound for the generation of beta blockers. Answer is in isoprenaline isopropyl group is responsible for its selectivity towards beta adenoceptors. Now because isoprenaline shows activity at beta adenoceptors, by only few modifications in the structure of isoprenaline, generation of an partial agonist or antagonist is possible. That's why it is used as an lead compound for the generation of beta blockers. So now we will see that how an agonist is converted into partial agonist. Isoprenaline is first of all converted to dichloroisoprenaline. This is possible by the introduction of chloro groups. Further removal of both chloro groups generates prone ethanol. In this case, isoprenaline is beta agonist while dichloroisoprenaline and prone ethylol are partial agonist. Partial agonist bind to the receptor and produces induced fit which results in weak activation of receptors and also blocks the natural messenger from binding to the receptor site. So following convergence suggested that phenol groups are not required for antagonist activity. We can add extra binding groups to convert an agonist to an antagonist. Hydrophobic groups form extra van der Waal interactions. Next is converting a partial agonist to an antagonist. Introduction of a spatial group which is ether in the side chain of prone ethylol generates propanolol. Introduction of spatial is a chain extension strategy. Propanolol is a beta antagonist. Here ether group acts as an hydrogen bond acceptor and introduction of this group generated aryloxy propanolamine structure in which S enantiomer is active enantiomer. Next is a structure activity relationship of propanolol. Propanolol is an aryloxy propanolamine because it contains aryloxy group and propanolamine group. If we elaborate this structure, it contains a naphthalene ring system, ether, alcohol and amine side chain. In propanolol and other aryloxy propanolamine, Amine must be secondary in nature. The naphthalene ring system is replaceable with heteroaromatic rings and generates active compounds. Branched N alkyl groups fits as an hydrophobic pocket. N alkyl groups can be extended with N aryl ethyl groups and it is beneficial for activity.
Substitution at these positions lowers the activity of the compound. Here you can see the compounds generated from the variation in naphthalene ring system. Propanolol contains naphthalene ring system, while in case of pindolol, timolol, and metoprolol, there are various other heteroaromatic ring systems. All these compounds are beta blockers. We already studied structure activity relationship of diuretics and vasodilators in previous chapters. You can refer my previous lectures for these structure activity relationships. In the next class, we will discuss structure activity relationship of other categories of antihypertensive agents.